as we get going, guys, um, you know, we're going to give it a few more minutes here, let people join. Um, but Ryan is our director of equipment finance. Um, so he runs everything that has to do with equipment. Um, he's been in the equipment industry for a really long time. So we're excited to have him share his knowledge today. Um, but you'll see, it'll be a lot of back and forth between Ryan and I we will do a, a brief um, presentation, nothing too crazy. We'll highlight some success stories. Um, but more than anything, we want to create engaging conversation. So um, allow this to be the first of many times that I invite you to utilize the Q&A feature uh, here on Zoom. We're going to continuously monitor the Q&A so that we can pull live questions out and, and get you guys some real deal answers. Um, but just as we're getting going today, if anybody does want to um, be heard, I will tell you right now that we're starting at the very top of the Q&A. Uh, we'll work our way down. We'll answer as many questions as we can. Um, and, and we'll give it another another couple minutes here just as we get going. We got a lot of people joining. Uh, we had over well over 500 people register for this thing. So definitely want to uh, make sure everybody has the chance to join. Um, really quick, Ryan, where in the world is Ryan Chen today? Where, where are you? I'm actually overseas in Asia, in Taipei, Taiwan. Wow, wow. Yeah. Not jealous at all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, we're, we're super excited um, to really just dive in here. Um, the one thing that I want everybody to know is rock is all over this, this world, right? Like he, he, Ryan is a, is a testament to that, where it, it really doesn't matter where you are. Um, what it matters is what you know and what you're able to apply, right? Um, you'll see a lot goes into what we do and how we do it. And we'll, um, we'll certainly be diving into a lot of ins and outs of equipment finance today. But one thing that is for certain is regardless of what business you're in, regardless of your industry, regardless of your background, um, you can certainly make a make a living in this industry and, and utilize all of the different products to help do so. Um, as we get going here, um, I always like to, to kind of start the same way um, with who you are, where you're calling in from and uh, and whether you're currently partnered with rock or not. Um, so really quick in the Q and a, if you don't mind, you can, uh, if you don't mind dropping in to the Q and a um, where you are, where you're calling in from. Um, we're super excited to have everybody. That's for sure. I see there's a couple questions already about whether this is being recorded. Absolutely. Uh, you can certainly, certainly, certainly find the recording. Anybody who registered will also get a copy of today's recording as well as the presentation. And we even included a really cool um, feature, uh, the equipment list at the end of this uh, at the end of this presentation. So everybody will have access to this. Um, I see Brian and Jeff calling in from Portland, Oregon, George down in Georgia, recovering from brain surgery. Shout out to George. I hope you're doing well, man. Um, I see we got Toronto, Canada, Tijuana, Mexico, California, another California, Canada, Key Largo, Florida, Tyler, Texas, Dwayne out of Los Angeles, Mary. Got people from a uh, couple people from Arizona, Phoenix, yep. Yep. Mesa. Yep. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. This is, um, this is our, our thing guys. If you've never been a part of our webinar, um, you know, thank you for joining. If you are, if you've been on one of these webinars, welcome back. Uh, a little different for us today. We got Ryan joining us. Um, Ryan, just remind everybody where you're calling in from. What time? I'm coming in. It's two o'clock in the morning. Oh, so you're, it's already the 22nd where you are. It is. <laughs> Uh, where are you, Ryan? Just one more time. Yeah, I'm in uh, Taipei, Taiwan. Wow, wow. Yeah. How long? Uh, how long you been there? Last time we spoke, you were you were there as well, right? Yeah, I travel back and forth here and there, but uh, primarily stay out here for the most part. Um, now going on three or four years. Love it, love it, love it. Um, so 
just to to kind of get going here, guys. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna make this thing too too crazy. Uh, we'll get diving into the uh, the presentation in just a second here. Um, but as we get going, a couple quick housekeeping uh, housekeeping things. If you are looking to get your questions answered, we've enabled the Q&A feature for that. It just really allows for us to really dive into what are the, the, most, uh, the most valuable questions. So we're not getting too many duplicates or having to answer the same thing twice. So please, please, please feel free to utilize the Q&A. I see a lot of you guys already did. Shout out to everybody who has. Um, we will be sharing this recording with anybody who registered. So feel free to uh, feel free to, um, you know, log off if you have to. You can always watch the recording. We're going to send out the uh, the presentation at the end, um, but we will certainly be getting going here. Um, and I just need to. Am I sharing the? Like, am I presenting? We're we're in presenter mode. Okay, cool. Sorry, just had to get permission from from the marketing girls that we're all good. Um, really quick. Like Ryan mentioned, he shouted out Abby. Um, I just want to shout out the rest of the team that helped put this thing together. Uh, the marketing team, especially Christina, Lauren, Marilyn, for really uh, putting together such a rock star presentation. And without further ado, we're going to get rocking, guys. Um, so I am Tony Semino. I'm our VP of Business Development. If you've never been on one of these webinars, um, congrats to you. If you have, I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Welcome back if you have, and thank you so much for joining us. One thing that is not lost on me is the audience that we have. Um, so shout out to you guys for joining us. We're already over 100 participants. Um, but if you need to reach me, here is my direct line, my direct email. You might even get some emails from Tony C at. That's not my real email. That's an alias. That's a that's a marketing thing. Uh, you can have the real one today. Um, and then, like I said, Ryan is our equipment finance manager. Ryan, give us a little bit of background on you, man. How how long you been in equipment? So I've been in the equipment financing going on in this industry going on about twenty years. I've helped about. I, I want to say close to 10,000 small businesses finance over $250 million worth of equipment. Um, yeah, and I've been all over the place. I've been not only at a few different lenders and broker shops, but also uh, vendors as well. So I bring, bring a wealth of knowledge uh, to this industry. Let me ask you a, a unique question. Um, sure. You know, Ryan's been with us for a few months now, but there was a little bit of a courting process that went down. Um, you know, where, where we were trying to see, is there a fit, uh, amongst you working with us, us working with you? Um, what was it that, that caught your eye or what was it that, uh, that you realized like, Hey, I want to be a rock star. <laughs> yeah. So what really impressed me, uh, about rock is its ability to reach out to a whole different set of partners, bring on those partners and then offer really offer a lot of value in terms of the types of products that, uh, are on offer in, in our suite of products. Uh, not only on the merchant cash advance, also on the working capital, but uh, more recently with the addition of commercial real estate, asset back lending, things like that, that were covered in the previous webinar with Steve Rodriguez, um, who is also a rock star, uh, super bright, uh, and has been around the commercial finance industry for, I think, just as long as I have, if not longer. Yeah, you know, one of the things that, uh, that, isn't lost on me is that you guys chose to work with us um you know like i said you guys have been with us a few months now so you're definitely a part of the team and and a part of the family but just to to get a chance to circle back to some of that that courting process or even right beforehand is always fun right because at, at the end of the day you guys have a ton of experience a wealth of knowledge you could do this on your own um but you chose to to become part of the the rock family and you know, that's exactly what our partners have done here. They've all partnered with Rock because they see value in working with us, right? And that's where I think just diving into our story for a second is super unique. Um, anybody who doesn't know us, we've been in this industry 15 plus years. We were initially started on the working capital side of things like Ryan was touching on with term loans, lines of credit, the merchant cash advance being the main product. Um, and then as we were in business for 10, 12, almost 15 years, we started to realize the the need for other products. I mean, I, I funded my first equipment deal with Rock in my first few months in the business back in, in early 2017. Um, and I, I realized then that, you know, it's not just about our core products. 
there are some some ancillary services for for lack of a better term that were out there and we were able to get some deals done it was a it was a cool time where you know we had some cool relationships with other brokers who were helping us get some deals done um but nothing really too too formal you know if you're a partner on this call you might have even funded equipment with us in the past um you might have even funded uh, some factoring deals with us in the past well the only difference is is the formalization and if you've been a partner with us you get that that's really everything you know as far as process technology goes we're the industry leaders when it comes to being a partner um so when when you start to get this flip side of things with equipment or or you know commercial real estate or any abl product it was unique for us that we weren't as hands on or we weren't as knowledgeable so we had to go find those people and shout out to steve and ryan who who head up those teams and those divisions because they are true rock stars. This is what we, this is what we do. This is how we, um, we do business, right? So the evolution of our business was we were once specifically marketing driven right now, a hundred percent of our business comes from people like everybody on this call. And you may be saying, well, well, why, right? Why is it that they are partnering with you guys? And I promise I'll let Ryan talk. He's just going to do most of the talking about equipment. So I'm going to get through my slides. He's going to get into his, <laughs> but Ryan, feel free to interrupt anytime, man. Um, You're doing great. But why do partners choose rock? I appreciate it. Uh, it it's, it's really a variety of reasons. People process technology are at the top. Um, you know, I saw a question about the, um, I saw a question earlier about the, portal how do i get access to the portal uh you can reach out to your point of contact we can certainly certainly get you access to the portal if you are not a partner you can certainly reach out to us to become a partner you could go to rock.biz forward slash partners um but that's certainly certainly the easiest way reach out to your point of contact they'll help you reset your password get into the portal what's inside the portal well the portal is like uh it's the area where you become part of the team. The There is everything in there that you would get access to as a rock sales rep, you get access to as a rock referral partner. So uh, marketing materials, custom landing pages, uh, all your real-time statistics, your existing pipeline, um, all of your historical funding data, your commissions, all of that lives in our My Partner portal, which is powered by Salesforce. Um, so you're getting access directly to our CRM. You can leverage our brand, our relationships, and it really does create a system where you can extend all of these products directly as a, an arm of your own, right? You can do this as much or as little as you'd like. And what I mean is you can be as involved or uninvolved as you'd like. We have partners with us who are brokers of, of these specific products. And they'll refer us a client when their their traditional lenders decline a, a, a client. And when we get them an approval, they take that approval, they go out and sell it just like they were working with a, a direct lender. There's other people that will generate a lead, nothing but a name and a number, refer that over to us. Our sales process will take over from front to back, get the deal funded, and ultimately get the customer what they're looking for, right? At the same time, we're also going to help our referral partners create more business, close more deals, and get them paid for doing so. So that's really the the whole system. Now I'm going to take a step back. And Ryan, you gave an awesome, awesome, quick insight definition yesterday as we were talking and getting prepared for this. I don't know if you remember exactly what you said, but I said if you could if you could drop that on this slide, it would it would be a, a great way to segue into into equipment. You're going to have to remind me of what it was, but if I can think back, I think it was just talking about just the sheer size of this equipment financing industry. Um, we can go to the next slide on this one. So a lot of people don't realize that the equipment financing industry is such a tremendously large part of small business finance. So just last year in 2022, over $1.1 trillion of equipment was purchased. Now, the vast majority of small businesses, about 78%, um, yielding about $858 billion of equipment is financed via loan, lease, or line of credit. Um, and the reason being is that there's a lot of advantages for small businesses 
uh, to utilize equipment financing. So this would include things like, you know, tax savings or cash flow optimization, you know, plan against equipment obsolescence, right? And so, you know, when people hear the word equipment, they think about a construction site, right? You'll think about cranes and cement mixers and trucks and trailers. And while that all is equipment, every single business that you can think of needs some sort of equipment. So as an example, when you walk into a Starbucks, you don't realize that there's about 100, 100 to $150,000 worth of equipment behind the counter, right? You're thinking about the blenders, the coffee machines, the ice machines, the panini press, uh, the display case, the digital signage, the point of sale terminals. All of this is equipment. More importantly, it's equipment that can be financed. And so, you know, there's a tremendous amount of opportunity here. As long as this equipment is essential to the business, we can finance it. Um, yeah. One caveat to that is that the only type of equipment we don't finance is anything that flies or floats, right? So planes, we won't finance. There's other companies that do that. We won't do anything that floats like a boat um, for insurance purposes and tracking purposes. But other than that, if it's essential to that business, then it makes sense then we can finance that for that business. No, and that's the the biggest point, right? Like you mentioned, it is being essential to the business operation. Um, that's right. You know, and it, this goes well beyond some of the things that we'll talk about on, on some of the future slides here. But like, let's call a spade a spade. It, it doesn't really matter what what type of business. It more matters what type of equipment. Right. Um, in terms of, hey, there's thousands of different kinds of trucks, right? You got box trucks, tow trucks, you know, trailers, you know, um, semi trucks. You got a lot of different types of trucks. You could simply be talking about the truck that a foreman rides around in all day. We could be talking about an F 150, <laughs> you know, and essentially, if that foreman is going from job to job, and it's his way of getting from job to job. That is essential to that business. That business owner can take advantage of equipment financing to put that F-150 into the business to get this, this person going, right? So you may, you may say to yourself like, hey, is this really essential, right? Like you pointed out the point of sale uh, equipment that that's behind the counter at, at that Starbucks, right? Like this is, this is things that we don't necessarily think of. You think of Starbucks, you think about the cup of coffee you end up with, uh, not necessarily how you paid for it or the signage that they had or the TVs or, you know, even the, the glass casing, right? Some of the glass casing, some of the, uh, the display cases, display case. yeah. you know, the, the, the refrigerated cases, you know, with the cake pops, those things are pretty good. Um, know my way around those. Um, but no, the, the real thing that you got to understand is when you walk into a business, pretty much everything that you see is equipment, you know, the, the, um, tables and chairs, that's yeah, equipment. Exactly. Tables, chairs, keyboards, you know, uh, all sorts of different stuff. So let's jump into some of the meat and potatoes here. What are some of the categories? There's a wide range of categories, guys. We touched on some of these, but you could be talking about printing and packaging. You could be talking about um, moving and storage. You could be talking about hardware and software in the technology industry. You could be talking about construction equipment or uh, skid steer or a backhoe or a small forklift, you name it. And you could be talking about a retail store and their the different rows and aisles of, of shelving that they have. Like all of this stuff is what we're talking about, right? So just to dive in, trucks first, right? The, my son would be proud. Uh, he loves his trucks. He would tell you what all of these look like. Um, but this is just an idea behind what does this industry, and this is really scratching the surface. You'll see at the end of the presentation, there's like 25 slides and shout out to Marilyn for this of equipment lists that you guys can refer back to going forward. But this is just a quick idea as to what some of the trucks are that you can finance. Ryan, I'm going to let you jump back in here, man. Yeah, real quick on the previous slide, for some reason we put on a tank uh, where you don't finance tanks. Um, but I think they meant tanker truck. So I just thought that was funny. Uh, we'll go on to the next slide. <laughs> yeah, it actually should be tanker truck. Anyway, uh, so 
we wanted to sh share with you guys some success stories and some of the programs that are being offered specifically within equipment financing. So one of the things that, uh, one of the businesses that we financed a box truck for was a business in Chicago, We're looking for three box trucks for moving um, locally and intrastate. Uh, on this one, what we were able to do is get them a 72 month term. Now, typically for equipment financing, you're seeing anywhere from 24 to 60 month terms. Now, 12 months is a program that we do offer. It's pretty expensive, but it is there for the, uh, for the customers that are looking for a shorter term. But in addition, on the flip side of things, we also do offer 72 month terms, which is outside of the traditional programs that are being offered. And so, you know, if the company in this case wanted to minimize their payments, we were able to offer them a 72 month term. Yeah, no. And what's unique about this too, is the fact that it's not just new equipment, right? I just want to highlight that one section there, right? It's one new and two used box trucks. That's right. right. So with titled equipment, the titled vehicles, there will be some, some uh, criteria around that. And if you have an opportunity, we can certainly dive into that with you. But as long as they meet the, the minimum mileage or the, excuse me, the maximum mileage, um, and they're not too old of a truck, we can certainly look at that, um, you know, so just keep that in mind. It, it's not just brand new equipment, right? It doesn't have to be as, a, a, you know, brand new and shiny. Um, you know, somebody could have used this thing in the past and now you're you're getting a look at it, um, which could save you a substantial amount, right? Like just like a, a regular car, a truck, the second you take it off the lot is going to come down a lot in, in value. So um, keep that in mind as you're, you know, as you're going day to day, it's not just new equipment. Right. So another great industry, you know, you use the Starbucks example is the restaurant or food and beverage industry. You could be talking about fast food franchises. You could be talking about these coffee shops. You could be talking about um, five star steak restaurants. Right. With uh, gigantic walk in freezers or, you know, I've even seen some where you get to pick out your piece of meat. Right. Like all of this stuff. It is exactly what we're talking about, right? Um, so you have all of these different pieces of equipment. Uh, but again, another quick success story that we wanted to highlight. Yeah, so for this one, it's a restaurant in Texas, Steakhouse, as you can ima probably imagine, they were looking for $100,000 worth of restaurant equipment, which included you know, fryers and ovens and commercial dishwashers and prep tables to prep you know, the meals. Now, what was interesting about this one was that they were so successful that they wanted to expand. So the expansion location, or I'm sorry, the original location had been around for around 10, 11 years under the same ownership. And the owners decided, hey, we want our son to have a location on his own to manage. So they decided to open one, you know, just the town over just about 15 miles away. And so normally in equipment financing, if someone was to take a look at the file and say, hey, this restaurant is a brand new restaurant, but we did a little bit of digging on our research, talking to the customer. We realized that they had an original location that we could tie in the time of business from the original location to this and extend it to this uh, brand new expansion location. The caveat to that is that they had to retain the same ownership. They had to retain the same name. So it was the same brand, same steakhouse but we were able to get them outside of the startup category uh, that they normally would have been placed under and into an expansion restaurant and credit them that crucial 10 years time of business. Yeah, I mean, especially with a restaurant, right? There's so many statistics that say X amount of restaurants fail in their first year or their first three years or their first five years. I mean, I've been in this industry for a long time. I work with a lot of people in the banking industry. I literally don't know of one bank in America that lends money to restaurants with less than five years in business, right? So this is a way for us who are a little bit more hands-on to understand the opportunity of the business, right? Essentially, if you go to the bank and you tell them, hey, I'm opening a new location for my restaurant and I want to take out money for that, they're going to decline you because it's a new location. That's instantly it. If you don't have five years of history at that location, it's done. So now you have to look elsewhere, right? That's where we step in and really hone in on, hey, it's a new location, yeah, but they got 10 years of history here that we can utilize to show that if, if there's anybody that's got some proof to, to being able to borrow some money, 
it's this scenario, right? So I just want to point that out that like, hey, it's not always about what's black and white. Sometimes it's that we operate in the gray that can really help out with a specific scenario. Um, Another major industry is the medical industry, right? Um, Some of these words I can't even say. Uh, (laughs) But the, the real thing that I want to point out here is all of the different things that you see when you sit down in a doctor's office can be financed. Every piece of equipment that they're using. So keep that in mind as you are marketing this stuff or as you are interacting on your day to day, you know, depending on what your lead gen strategy is, that's how you can then go apply this information back. If you know that you're in a networking group and there's doctors in there, well, you can start to talk about being able to finance some of their equipment, right? And this is a really great opportunity here because what's unique about this opportunity is the customer initially came in looking for cash, right? But understanding what they were doing with the cash we were able to say, hey, what are you doing with the money? And then boom, we we were able to get them financing for the equipment. Ryan, I'll let you, I'll let you step in. Yeah. So, you know, Tony brings something uh, up that's really great is that people just don't realize how much equipment is at every business, right? When you go to the de- dental office and you're sitting in the chair, you're not thinking that this chair is equipment that is essential to that business, right? Um, you know, in this picture, we obviously have a dental chair. There's tools, there's computers to, you know, monitor medical records, patient records and whatnot. Um, you know, the pneumatic systems, the, the water system, that filtration, um, all of that is equipment. In this specific case, uh, the, the dental, the, the dentist rather, was looking to finance two x-ray machines for their two practice space, right? And so they were looking for a 36 month term. Um, But what's interesting about this is that he was a brand new dentist. It was a brand new practice, had never been opened or anything like that. And so similar to the previous uh, example that we gave, what programs that we offer allow to credit the the medical practitioner or the doctor to uh, to credit their time in business from the date that they're getting their license. Right. And so even though he had not yet opened his doors, he did not yet practice on a single patient in this new practice. We we're able to give him access to a program that credit him time of business from the time that he got his license. And so I thought that was something that we should highlight as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because let's face it, you know, uh, a doctor's business is that license, right? Once they've uh, once they've said their oath, um, you know, they're, they're rocking and rolling, as we say, you know, so it, it's awesome that we have programs that that highlight that. Right. Um, yeah. Same thing on the on the cash side, like there are programs out there in the in the medical space for those licensed professionals um, that they can leverage their licensing in order to get access to better rates and terms or longer terms or simply just uh, simply get approved because they are they are that type of, uh, of licensed professional. Um, they have programs that are specific to them. So um, definitely a, a awesome success story to highlight because it's such a unique industry. Um, you know, I always like to say, who doesn't like to lend money to doctors? Um, you know, we, it, it, we do it in all shapes or, and forms. Um, we even have the ability to, to leverage their receivables through the, the insurance companies. Um, so if you are somebody that works with doctors, dentists, veterinarians, um, anybody in the medical industry, uh, it's definitely worth a conversation about how we support that industry because um, there's a lot of different ways, that's for sure. Um, And then technology, right? Um, I always say technology is great till it isn't. At least we're all working right now. Ryan's on the screen. We got the presentation rocking. Uh, So technology is going for us right now, but there's a lot of different kinds of technology, guys. Um, You know, we were talking about it um, yesterday, as we were, like I was saying, we were preparing and I even said to Ryan, like, people don't realize like how big GPS has become in terms of like equipment financing. Right. And just being able to track the piece of equipment itself, right. Some of these, uh, equipment financing, um, these equipment financing agreements have that you have to have a specific GPS system in place or a specific tier of that in place in order for them to finance the equipment. Other ones, these equipment, these pieces of equipment are so valuable to them, they want to finance 10 or 12 GPSs themselves to put it into their trucks or into the trailers or onto their pieces of equipment. So technology is everywhere, that's for sure. Um, But 
awesome, awesome success story here to highlight as well. Yeah. And just to add to that, Tony, you know, we say technology and that extends to hardware for sure, but it also extends to the software that operates on that hardware. So there's a lot of specialty, specialty software um, specific to certain industries that we can extend financing to, whether that's uh, you know a yearly subscription or even a monthly subscription, we can wrap that in as part of the package because obviously the hardware is no good without the software, the software is no good without the hardware. Right. And so we want to make sure that we're packaging that in um, so that it's an inclusive uh, agreement for that business owner. In this particular case, uh, you know, we finance some technology equipment for a post production studio. This one was super cool for me because I'm, you know, super into movies and they were a production studio that produces trailers, movie trailers that you see at the beginning of every single movie. And so they have to keep uh, uh, up to date with the latest and greatest in equipment. Uh, they were looking for $150,000 for Avid. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but um, they're the ones that make the, you know, editing bays where basically you see in, uh, you know, audiovisual studio where they have like the controllers that, uh, you know, adjust the sound and color. Anyway, they're looking for $150,000 worth of audio video production equipment um, based in New York. And this one was on a 36 month term, but what was interesting about this one, it was actually a three plus 33. Obviously that adds to 36. So why split that up? The reason is because uh, we also offer interesting programs to help the customer save money. And or, what I mean by that is this customer opted to have a 90 day deferral at the beginning of their uh, finance agreement so that they can get the equipment up and running they can get trained on the equipment, it was new, and they didn't wanna make any payments for the first 90 days because they weren't making money with this equipment, right? And so we put them on a 90 day deferral program, first three months, they didn't pay the regular program, it's just $100 as a contact and payment so that the customer knows, hey, I still have this lease agreement, it's not like 90 days later and they're surprised with some sort of uh, you know, bill in the mail. And so it's just a simple $100 contact payment to um, the lender, just so that they know that this is ongoing. And then it allowed them to get the equipment installed, tuned to their specifications, and also trained on the equipment. And since they weren't making any money on it, you know, we didn't charge them. Um, but in addition to that, we, you know, we have 90, 120, even 180 uh, deferred payments. We have seasonal programs. Landscaping is a good example of that. You know, when it's the winter months, they're not using the equipment, so why should they pay for it? So they can defer instead of being front loaded um, for that 90 day for deferral program. You know, we can say, hey, it's the summertime between November to February. You don't want to make your payments because you're not using equipment. We'll set it so that those 90 days you're not making payments. And so there's a lot of interesting ways to uh, creative ways to get these financing programs set up specifically and customized uh, for these businesses. No, that's, uh, that's really awesome. You know, it, it, it allows a business owner to, to take advantage of the opportunity rather than being taken advantage of, you know, sure. um, the financing should support what they're trying to do. Um, I always say dollars make sense, right? If you want somebody to pay you back for this equipment, and not necessarily have to go go get it yourself and sell it on a secondary market after they default on your loan, well, then you would want to set them up for success with something like this. So this is really, really awesome information that you can basically customize it so that it speaks to the business's cyclical nature, right? Or yeah. just the fact that they are getting access to some new uh, some new equipment. So it might be training and, and really getting up and going before that equipment even makes them any money. So it, that's, yeah. that's, that's huge. Just yeah. To In addition to that, we didn't, you know, have a specific example for this just because we haven't utilized it just yet, but there's also step-up programs. Though Tony was mentioning, Hey, you know, when a new business is getting step started up or getting uh, acclimated to new equipment, we have step-up programs where we're stepping up the payments incrementally so that they're not, <clears throat> you know, expected to make their full payments straight off the bat. You know, our goal here is to customize these programs um, and these payments uh, for the customer so that they can afford it and really ultimately make money from the equipment uh, that they're acquiring. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely.
Um, we got some really great questions coming into the Q&A, guys. I promise you we're going to get to them, um, but I'm super duper excited for that. The one thing that we wanted to point out is if you see that equipment, Rock funds it, right? Again, there's a very long list at the end of the uh, the presentation that everybody will get um, of all different types of equipment that we we fund. But if you can think of equipment, like Ryan was saying, that is essential to a business, and you have a business owner who you know needs funding for that equipment, call us. Let's have a conversation. That's what we're here for. Um, you know, not that we're going to do every deal, but we're certainly going to give you the feedback about is this deal possible or not. Um, so just really quick, some uh, some overview, right, uh, of the programs a little bit. I saw some questions about this uh, already. You know, what is the the borrower profile? What types of credit profiles do you guys look at? Will you do startups? So here is all of that information, right? Our terms go out to 72 months. We'll do small deals. We'll do large deals. The one thing Ryan and I talked about this a lot that we wanted to make sure that we we really hit home on was what is the core borrower look like and what is our core equipment finance client look like and it's basically a mirror image of what it is on the working capital side right our bread and butter where we're going to do 85 to 90 percent of these deals is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars and under and even two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and under if you have a customer that has a few pieces of equipment or one piece of equipment that they're trying to buy and they're you know in business they have some soft costs behind it. We'll explain what those are in just a second or two. You can get access to up to 100% financing, right? And that's what the beauty of this program is, is, you know, when we brought Ryan on, we wanted to, to feel like, hey, this is the same rock experience that we get just in a different vertical. And that's what we've created, where there are multiple lenders who have multiple products that make up multiple different tiers within the product of equipment finance, right? And there's even different products. I saw somebody talking about sale leasebacks or purchasing equipment versus a lease of equipment, right? These are different types of products. We have access to a lot of this stuff, guys. So as you have these questions or these scenarios, the best thing you can do is give us a call and let's talk about it. As long as you see that it meets these this information in front of you, it's worth a conversation to us and the team, that's for sure. Yeah. Just a couple of things to add to that, Tony. Yeah. You know, the minimum deal size, and I've seen a couple of questions come across. Our minimum deal size is about 5,000. If it's 4,000, not a big deal. We'll still take a look at it. And we can go all the way up to 10 million, but our, our sweet spot for financing is really kind of between the 75 to 250, right? That doesn't mean if it's less than that, don't submit it. Um, certainly we wanna take a look at everything. And there's certain times that, you know, you bring in a customer, and they say, hey, I'm looking for this $50,000 truck. Well, do you need other equipment alongside that? Maybe it's a forklift. Maybe, you know, if it's an automotive repair shop and you need a tire balancer. We sometimes will ask the customer, we'll always ask the customer what else they're looking to finance so that we can tack that onto that uh, equipment finance agreement for sure, right? The beauty about equipment financing is that um, when there's multiple invoices, we can spread that across multiple lenders. And so that, you know, if... As example, a restaurant, right? There's restaurants that uh, require a pizza oven from vendor one and a re refrigerator from vendor two. We can either put them that on the same equipment financing schedule or split it up so that A, we get the best program, but B, you know, that they're getting all of the equipment that they potentially could want. No, it's a, it's a great point. Um, Ryan, I am going to ask you one last question before we go on. Cause it's already in the, in the uh, Q and a here. What sure. Soft costs. Yeah. Soft costs are things like shipping, handling, training of the equipment. Right. And so it's not an asset that's tangible, but it's certainly part of that asset. And so a good example that I had mentioned earlier was that audiovisual production company, they had to be trained on that. And there's a cost associated to, that training, right? They had to fly out a specialist, do on-site training for the company uh, in getting it set up, not only getting it set up, but training on how to properly use the, the equipment. So soft costs are just the stuff that aren't tangible. Yeah, like you said, shipping, handling, installation, training, all of this stuff can be financed, guys. So right. you'll see future success stories from us. They'll be a 
an equipment value and then there'll be a financed amount and those will be different. That's based on not only soft costs, but also down payment, right? Sometimes there will be a down payment associated. Other times we're able to do 100% financing and the soft cost. So really understand what are the differences and, and how that makes sense for the businesses that are now borrowing this type of money, right? Um, you'll see that others will talk about doing equipment financing, but will they be able to get up to a hundred percent? Will they add in some of this soft cost? A lot of times you won't see that from banks or, or traditional style lenders out there because they're going to finance that piece of equipment. The rest of it is kind of on you um, where you'll see this stuff is where we live. And that's in the more competitive market. You know, there are a few more lenders in the alternative space. They're they're getting competitive at one another. So this is good for the borrowers. This is good for us as brokers. We can sell these products. So uh, keep that in mind as we as we really get going. Couple last couple slides here. Nothing crazy. Always like to highlight our reviews and and really encourage anybody who's new to this or hasn't worked with us to look us up and look us up versus others in the industry. Take a look at Trustpilot, Google, uh, Best Company, all of the review sites that are out there. You'll see nothing but five-star reviews about people who've borrowed money from us or businesses that have borrowed money from us, as well as partners who've referred us those businesses, right? These are real uh, individuals who partnered with Rock. We have over 10,000 active partners at the moment. So um, it's really, really important to me that you understand it's not about us. It's about all of this. It's about all of the, the reviews and the people that we help because that's what we do. We help business owners gain access to funding regardless of what they're utilizing the funding for. So um, this is the, the time, right, where now you can become a partner. Uh, it's very, very easy. I love this new feature that we're doing um, where you just got to scan this QR code. My team, I promise, is waiting for you. I promise they want the phone calls. They're waiting to convert your leads. They're waiting to give you access to the portal. They're waiting to talk to you. Um, so feel free to become a partner now. Feel free to follow us on social media. Feel free to um, become a rock star because that's really what my challenge is back to everybody on this call is utilize rock as much as you're able to. Um, that's how we're best utilized. Put us to the test where you see fit. I'm more than hoping, and judging by some of the questions in the q and I'm more than hoping that uh, that equipment's going to be a big part of this. So um, we're going to just get wrapped up here. I think uh, I think we got one more slide because if you do want to call in, I, I gave you the phone number so that you can do it here. Um, but this is the last slide here. Like I said, after this, there are a ton of of different pieces of equipment that we will give you access to. I promise we even do cannabis equipment, right? So I, I hope that everybody's pulling some value out of today. I hope that you guys got your, uh, got your uh, notepads out and took some notes and, and really, uh, you know, took some value out of this thing. I want to say thank you to you, Ryan, for, for joining us here. Uh, Absolutely close to 3 a.m. now, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, definitely uh, excited to to connect some of these partners that are going to have some of these transactions with you once we uh, once we get hung up here. Um, anything you want to you want to leave the people with before we uh, before we sign off? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, hopefully this was super informative for everyone who joined. If you do have other questions, feel free to reach out. Um, you know, every single transaction that comes across our desk is going to get viewed by a person and we are going to respond. So please send in those questions, um, you know, as you learn this product and as you're approaching, you know, your business network, we want to be able to help. And so feel free to reach out to us any way you can contact information on the, uh, the presentation presentation. Again, it's going to be passed around after uh, this concludes and you can reference this as a resource, leverage us as a resource to answer questions and uh, let's get rocking and rolling. Absolutely. Love it. Love it. Love it. You guys are all rock stars. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out with Ryan and I this afternoon or evening or morning or early, early morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, thank you guys again. Thank you to everybody that put this thing together and we will catch you guys on our next webinar. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a good one. Have a great day. Thanks.